She likes to shop now. Oh, it's Actually, huge. It's pretty big. Yeah, that's a 2006 Clayton Home. Clayton. What? Who's, who's inviting all these people over here? It's Saturday. Oh, <laughs> Shoot. Mandy have it. Yeah, it? they have a green one. It's not a macaw though. No. There's just a parrot. Out. Give us a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy.
She's actually the largest macaw species. And she shows off that size of hers with those long tail feathers and that big head and beak to match. Now that beak on Chloe is very useful for her because not only does she use it as another foot, so when those two feet on her are busy, she'll use that beak to climb up even higher into those trees. But she also uses that beak to crack open some of her most favorite foods such as nuts and seeds. Now for Chloe here, I have one of her most favorite snacks. I have a hazelnut. But does anyone feel super strong and want to help me out with that? Anyone? I saw your hand, buddy. Come on down. You did? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's not good. Well, here's this hazelnut for you. So try to squeeze it for me. So squeeze it. Try to crack it open. <laughs> Super hard, huh? Well, I'll take that hazelnut back, buddy. It doesn't seem like you cracked it yet, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it on over to Chloe here, and we're actually gonna listen for that nice crack, okay? Once she's done dancing. Oh. Whoa, did you hear that? It was within that second, huh? Yeah, and you see she made a real big mess, huh? Well, thank you, buddy, so much for coming out and seeing us. Here's a sticker for you. Everyone, please give him a big round of applause. He did amazing. Ooh, that's a nice little seat. You want to go? Yeah, you can give it to her. Oh, there you go. Go on, take a seat. Everyone, uh, give another round of applause. He did amazing. So as you guys saw, Chloe here, she was able to crack that nut really easily. And she also did crack it right in half as well. So not all things. And one of those things, one of those things is actually called mimicking. So out in the wild, they'll mimic other macaw sounds to get into that flock since that's their family. But when they do live with us humans, they actually mimic what we say. And a lot of our parrots, they were previous pets. So please go on over and say hello to them. And they may say hello back because they learned that mimicking skills. Now Chloe here, we don't know much about her previous home, but we may know a few things. Like we do think she loved to welcome in all of her guests with a nice hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 Now we also think that maybe her family had some allergies because she loves to finish our sneezes. <gasps> right, give me some sights. <laughs> now we also think that her family's favorite holiday is Halloween because she loves to practice that Halloween costume. <laughs> right, a monster. <laughs> now when she practices that Halloween costume, sometimes she gets a scare out of us and she thinks it's funny. Is it funny? <laughs> right, she laughs at us. <laughs> But she knows that she will always love us and we will always love her because she loves to send it off with a nice big kiss. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you so much for coming out and seeing us today. And Buffy, she's going to be our striped skunk. And as I mentioned, Buffy here, she is native to North America, so right in our own backyard. And I know that a lot of people, they're usually afraid of these skunks, and that is because of Buffy's spray. Now, Buffy here, she can actually spray up to about 10 feet away, and she can hit a bullseye target. Oh. And they can spray as young as eight days old, so even before they open their eyes. Oh. But you guys do not have to be worried about Buffy spraying you, because when she does spray, it actually takes about a week to refill that spray gland. Oh. And during that week, Buffy, she will be defenseless. So she will give off a lot of different warning signs before she does spray such as Buffy, she will hiss, she will growl, she'll puff up her fur very big, and then the last thing she'll do is a handstand. If you do not heed that handstand warning, well then Buffy, 
<laughs> she will turn around, aim, and fire. Now, I used to believe that you get that skunk spray out with tomato juice, because that's usually what you find out online. But I will say the best way to get that spray out is actually Dawn dish soap with a little bit of baking soda instead. Because people that use that tomato juice, they ended up smelling like tomatoes and skunk, and that doesn't smell really good together. Now, Buffy, even though she does have that spray, she's actually great to have in our own backyard. That's because she eats all those different things that we don't like, such as fleas, ticks, scorpions as well. But I will say that Buffy here, she is a known predator for venomous snakes. Oh. Now you may be thinking, how does this adorable ball of fluff eat those venomous snakes? Well, I will say that her fur, it is so thick that when that venomous snake tries to strike at her, all it gets is that mouthful of fur instead. And then Buffy, she will turn around and she will have that snake snack instead of becoming the snake snack. Well, thank you, Buffy, so much for coming out and seeing us today. Oh. Now this here is going to be Tortellini. Wow. And Tortellini here is going to be our Sulcata tortoise. Now he does have another name called the African Spur tortoise, and that can tell you two things about him. That he is from that Africa region and those spurs on him as well. And I know they're kind of hard to see, but if you actually look at the back half of his body, kind of where those back feet go out, he has these two big spurs that come straight out of his back. And those are really sharp points that actually helps protect himself. Because in Africa, it's really hot, and the only way to cool down is to dig really deep underground. And these tortoise species, they can actually dig up to about 25 feet deep. And when they are digging, they dig all head first, so having those spurs on the back actually helps protect them against any sort of predator. Now, I know that Torlini may look really big, but he's not showing off the true size of those tortoises because he's going to be the third largest tortoise in the whole world. And when these guys are born, they're actually born the size of a golf ball, so super tiny. So, but when they do get older, they get up to about 250 pounds. And they do uh, age a long time as well. They live up to about 150 years old. So if you ever did have one as a pet, you have to have kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids <laughs> to pass that tortoise down through generations. But as he does grow older, that shell, it will grow with him. So that means that his spine is actually infused into that shell. So whenever we pick him up, we want to make sure we're nice and gentle. And when we give them those touches, we want to make sure they're nice and soft as well. And if you guys do want to touch a tortoise, I do highly recommend it. We do have a tortoise touch art that is down by our petting zoo. Where we have a bunch of these sulcata tortoises that are much too big to be carried around. And I will say that if you do rub them right there on the rump, so kind of on the bottom of their shell, they will actually tell you they like it with a booty shape. South America for our next friend. Now this one, we're going down to the grasslands instead of up in the skies where Chloe was from. Wow. Now this here is Ellie. And Ellie, she's our red-legged Sarima. Now being that red-legged Sarima, unlike Chloe, who eats all those different types of nuts and seeds, Ellie here is what's called a predatory bird, which means she eats different types of small mammals and reptiles. And since she doesn't have a private chef like us out in the wild, she actually needs to do what's called a predatory slam where she will grab onto that snake or mammal and actually slam it into the ground multiple times until it does become nice and tenderized for her and she can actually break it up into those little pieces. Now, what's also really cool about Ellie is you may all notice that she has really long legs. So those long legs actually allows Ellie to run up to about 18 miles per hour on land. So she is a very fast runner. But what she can also do is she can actually jump and catch her prey. Ooh. And they can actually jump up to about six to eight feet tall, so she is actually a very good jumper. Ah. Now there are actually two types of crested serimas out there in the world. There is the red-legged, just like Ellie, and then there is also the black-legged. Now the only difference between the two are the colors on those legs. If you guys notice with Ellie, she has those orangish kind of red legs. Those black-legged will have those nice black legs. And they do have a very specific call, and it kind of sounds like a little puppy. So if you're ever out here in the zoo, and it maybe sounds like there's a lost puppy, do not worry, it's just Ellie communicating with all of her sisters and brothers. Well, thank you, Ellie, so much for coming out and seeing us today. Uh, Fluffy variety. Ooh, now this here is gonna be Cinnamon, and Cinnamon is gonna be our Derby's Wooly Opossum. Now, I know that she may not look like those different opossum species we see here 
in North America. Those really big ones that live on the ground and they usually play dead when you get right near them. Uh, Cinnamon here, she doesn't do any of that. She actually lives really high up in those trees where Chloe is from. And how you can tell that is she has those nice curved hands and feet that actually allow her to grip onto those tree branches and also Ryan's hand as well. But you may also notice with Cinnamon is she has those really big eyes and those really big ears as well. Mm -hmm. So she is what's called a nocturnal creature, which means she comes out during the nighttime. And so having those really large eyes actually allows more light and color to go through those eyes if she were to be awake during this daytime. Because right now she doesn't have the best eyesight, so having those much larger eyes allows her to actually see for her predators if she were to be awake right now. But you may also notice those really big ears. As she's been out here, she's kind of been flicking them back and forth. Now, she's not shivering or cold or anything like that. She's actually just listening to all the sounds around her because she needs to be able to listen for any of her predators or her family that might be near her. And another distinctive uh, characteristic about Cinnamon is that really long tail, if you guys can see it. <laughs> now that tail is prehensile. So what that means is it's basically another foot for Cinnamon. So when she's walking around uh, on Ryan, you may notice that she actually wraps that tail kind of around his arm. And so that tail is used for that balance really high up in the trees, because when the wind is blowing, she wants to make sure she doesn't fall. Now, unlike monkeys who can actually swing from their tail back and forth, Cinnamon, she can't do any of that. It is just used for that balance. And if you do notice, she doesn't have any fur on the end of it, so that actually allows her to have more grip with it as well. And these animals, they're gonna be what's called frugivores, which means they eat different types of fruits. But out in the wild, she will have different varieties of insects as well to get most of her protein source. Well, thank you, Cinnamon, so much for coming out and seeing us today. But our next friend traveling to us from Africa, this here is Barbie. And Barbie is gonna be our baby warthog. Now, I know I say baby with her, but she looks really big. Now, right now, she is about maybe like 40 to 50 pounds right now. But when she will get fully grown, she can eat, reach upwards about 200 to 400 pounds, depending on if they are male or female. So Barbie here, she still does have a lot of growing to do. Now she is almost a year old, so she still does have some growing to do and some life to live as well. But what you may notice on her is she doesn't have a lot of hair all over that body. But she does have hair right there on the center of her back. Now that's because in Africa, the sun, it's gonna be out, it's gonna be really hot. And so having that hair right there on that back actually helps protect her kind of like a sunscreen. But then what Barbie will also do is she will actually find a giant mud pile and she will rub her whole body in it head to toe. Now that also helps act as a sunscreen for her, but it also helps protect her from any sort of parasites that might get on her skin as well. Now, Barbie here, she is what's called an omnivore, which means she eats basically everything. So she eats fruits, vegetables, insects, and carry-on as well, which is actually carcasses out in the wild. And what Barbie here will do is, and she kind of showed it off a little bit before, <laughs> is she will actually go right there on those front two elbows, just like that. And she will actually use that really big nose on her to kind of forage around for her food dig really big holes in the ground and find all those insects underneath. So she is still quite a good digger, just like Torlini was as well. And if you do notice that she's been out here, she's actually kind of been flicking that tail back and forth. Now, unlike dogs who flick their tail back and forth to mean they're happy, Barbie here, what she's doing is she's just flicking off any sort of flies or parasites that could also get on her skin. And what's also cute with that tail is that out in the wild, in the grasslands of Africa, Sometimes the warthogs, they actually can't see each other. So what they will do is they will flick their tail up straight ahead and they will actually follow each other using their tail above the grass. So that's how they're able to find their family. And if you may notice with uh, warthogs, they usually have those really big tusks on the side of their face. Now, as I mentioned, since Barbie here, she's not even a year old just yet, they're still growing in. But if you do look nice and close at the side of her mouth, you'll see the openings where they're gonna start growing in and they will become very sharp. Not only are they used to help protect herself and her family, but it's also used to help her dig those burrows as well. 
Well, Barbie, she'll stay on out here to say hello to everybody, but she is our last animal for the show today. So I do thank you all so much for coming. If you do have any questions, please come on down and ask. After <laughs> that, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. <laughs> 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 he ran right over top of it. <laughs> Panther? Or jaguar? Well, uh, yeah. Panthers or either a leopard or jaguar just all black. But yeah, so that'd be a jaguar that's all black. That's the I did. I did.
No. <laughs> the first one to go. I've never seen white fox before. That's yeah, so pretty. Have you seen videos of them with bump cap? Is that all? Phoenix the cat. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Smiling for Josh. He said, "No, this is just for him." Yeah. I like it. 
<laughs> That's too it's funny. Either that or I want to bite your face off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks like a Hello. smile. Do this. Look at his going like this with his eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but this. <laughs> he's such cute eyes. So he's, Look at his, he's doing this with his eyebrows. Oh my gosh. Hi. <laughs> oh. I like it. Yeah. No way. Hi. She's definitely giving him the <laughs> smiles. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like somebody we know. You got beautiful teeth. Beautiful teeth. <laughs> I cannot believe this. This is the second time he's actually talking to an. <laughs> I know. I think she likes you. Good. You and Gigi, you gotta go. Gigi, better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> she said, come rescue me. Yeah, I'll be your pet. <laughs> Look at her eyes when she, she does that, raises her eyebrows. Yeah, I love her. There she goes again. God, <laughs> she's giving you smiles. Yeah. Since you look like oh, my I daddy. <laughs> okay, ready? Oh. Listen, listen. He's, she's talking. Yeah. Can you take me home with you, please? Yeah. Where's your teeth? Show your teeth. Your teeth. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see you. Oh, now she's you. sliding. I see you. <laughs> I see you. I see you. I see you. Yeah. Oh, that's what's going for. Yeah. That's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> 